Welcome back, everyone. I am here with Lizzie Hale. First of all, Lizzie, thank you so much for making time to do this. <laughs> You're so welcome. Thank you for taking the time to do this. Um, this is, it's an honor because of, you know, obviously your background and, and your, uh, you know, your, your nerdiness about <laughs> local, <laughs> which um, I'm, I'm very much that way too, but um, yes. you, okay. you're such a <laughs> too, so it's, 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 the pleasure's all mine. <laughs> That's very exciting to hear because I have like at least 10 questions for you about, <laughs> about vocal technique that we can get into and like totally nerd out about it. We can kind of like leave them a little bit, but it sounds like we're going to get into it. I, I think we're, yeah, we're going to get down the rabbit hole, I think. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Okay. Well, um, first question, the, the most essential one, uh, tea or coffee? Uh, well, okay. <laughs> So I am a coffee person, and I definitely uh, dabble in that. So I'm a little both. Um, Ooh, okay. I mean, I don't mix them together. That would be blasphemy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but right now I have a uh, like a uh, how do you even pronounce it? It's like a, a rooibos, like kind of like a red tea. Oh yeah, I've heard rooibos, but I've also heard rooibos. So yeah, I, I'm I, not actually sure. It's, it's a weird word because, like, even after you've seen it so many times written out or, like, printed out, it's, it's still, it's like there's a disconnect between the eyes and the brain and what's actually going on there. But, yeah, um, but yeah I go for a lot of the chai stuff um, and then some chamomile every now and then. And yeah, I have, a, I have a nice little tea set up in my kitchen. <laughs> yeah. I, do you mostly do um, more herbal teas? Yeah, I do. Um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the green tea for some reason. Um, it, it's so weird because I know that, uh, coffee is acidic, but I can somehow have coffee on an empty stomach and that doesn't bother me. But if I have like strong green tea on an empty stomach, I get a little nauseous. So I kind of steer clear of those. Yeah, I, I totally get that. Um, I like, so we have a white tea today. This one we actually got in London when we were there recently. It's called Longevité Suprême. It's like long, supreme longevity. I guess it's going to help me live a long life. So White tea is lovely as well. Right? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> mm, that's awesome. Uh, we're going to have to send you some fun rooibos tea. There's a really delicious one that I've had recently, which tastes like banana nut bread. Ooh, that sounds awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're like, wait a second, is that really going to be that good? And it really is that good. <laughs> It'd be great for when I'm snacky, too. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> or you're like, the like after dinner sweet that you're craving, right? Oh, it's perfect. Oh, the ice cream, go for the tea. <laughs> but I know, it went both. <laughs> Awesome. Well, okay. We had just started to talk a little bit before um, about where you're from, where you're currently at, uh, regards to location. So uh, I know you were born in Pennsylvania, and uh, and now you're currently in Nashville, and you even had like a wonderful, we're going to call it a um, very uh, life-changing experience in LA <laughs> recording a record. So can you kind of give us like a little, a little outline of where you've been sure. and how to get here now? Absolutely. Um, born in Pennsylvania, um, kind of right outside of Philly, and then my parents kind of moved around a lot within the state. So they they were um, they were very adventurous um, parents, and so uh, <laughs> we, we lived in like an old Victorian house, or it was actually a twin, but like a twin, um, until I was about nine, and then we moved uh, to a log cabin in the woods along the Appalachian Trail. Oh, um, literally uh, one bathroom, one like loft bedroom a living room in a kitchen that was it and there was four of us myself my little brother and my two parents Aww. um my dad's really handy so he built a whole extension on the house and he got everything really nice and then we moved <laughs> oh no <laughs> uh, I, that, that's what they would end up doing we like we'd fix everything up and it, it would be perfect and then it's like oh let's do something else now and then so from there i spent most of my young adult life from the time i was 11 through 18 um on a 20 acre farm in pennsylvania um uh, you know in and um or actually, it might have been, I'm not quite sure. Um, it was a long time ago, and uh, we uh, like had horses, and we raised sheep, and had chickens, and turkeys, and all of that. And then, uh, so, but when I was 13, we started the band, and over the course of a couple of years, we literally sold off almost all of our sheep um, in order to get a PA system. Um, our first trailer as a band was the donkey trailer. Um, all of our equipment um, smelled like hay for a long time. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 
And then, um, and then when I was 18, uh, you know, the, the farm had kind of run its course and, uh, we all moved to uh, York, Pennsylvania, mm. and um, and my parents were so nice because there was like a small like kind of mother-in-law suite extension with like a different entrance. They're like, "You're 18, you can have that." I'm like, "Oh, that's nice." <laughs> and, uh, and then um, when we were making our our first record, um, the guys and I moved out to LA uh, in order to find a producer and do some writing and all of that and uh literally uh spent a total of 19 months making that first record um in our you know it was, it was kind of crazy we got out there and we kind of got stuck um this is in 2008 when the uh industry was going nuts and you know the mm-hmm. whole blade was popping and and uh we we're on atlantic records and they let like 800 people go. We saw all of our peers being dropped. Our A&R guy that signed us got fired. It was, it seems like day to day. We were just like, all right, that was fun, everybody. But I guess we're going back home and it never happened. So first producer that we talked to couldn't do it. And then we actually found a producer and then we recorded the record and we just stayed there through mixing and mastering. And <laughs> through that time, uh, you know, lived through a, a fire, two earthquakes, um, a mudslide, you know, a, flooding it was it was quite the adventure um but then uh went back to PA and then when we we're making our second record um we went back out to LA to do that not spending that much time there <laughs> I was only a couple months <laughs> but um but it, during that course of the time um all of our parents called us up and uh basically said hey we're all moving to Florida because we can't stand the cold and we packed up all your stuff so we'll see you there. <laughs> <laughs> the guest bedroom with my parents for a short period of time and um and then during that course we had moved uh all of our equipment into storage in nashville all the buses were coming out of nashville mm. and so my guitar player and i were first um you know like we got to get out of florida and why don't we just go to nashville and mm-hmm. we went there for convenience out of you know for whatever reason and then we just fell in love with it it's a beautiful music town there's such an amazing community um everybody laughed at me because nashville is usually you know it's considered a country town a country music town obviously um city and uh but we found this amazing um hard rock rock and roll metal community that is actually in the underground here they're very oh. well present um but you never hear about it so we just we've met some incredible dear friends and so now yeah i've been um I, I think it's been almost a decade I've been in uh, Nashville, about nine years. So, yeah, That's, I just, I love it. Super awesome. I, it, Nashville is on my bucket list. Uh, I had heard from some friends as well that uh, it just encompasses a huge variety of music these days and great opportunities for all kinds of live performances and recording. And it sounds like just such an amazing city. <laughs> It, it really is. Um, it, you know, it's 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 gotten crazier over the years. Um, if you go downtown, there's just a plethora of. Uh, it's become the new like Nash Vegas because like <laughs> parties that are always walking around drunk during the day. And um, but it really is a music town. I remember when we first uh, moved in here, we went to the the local bar and the waitress came up like, "Oh, you know, haven't seen in here." We're like, "Yeah, we just moved." And she's like, "Oh, what do you do?" And I'm like, "Oh, we're musicians." She's like, "Oh, yeah, me too." Like everyone here is doing. <laughs> Like, you know, everyone's kind of on the same, you know, the same road. <laughs> right. That make, I mean, it makes sense. Um, but also, I just want to hard relate at the moment because <laughs> I grew up on a farm. I grew up on an orchard in the middle of Washington State. And it was more of, you know, like fruit kind of farm. Um, but we did have chickens, too. And wow, uh, it was fun to grow up on a farm because you could sing really loudly. <laughs> I, I have these uh, moments that I occasionally flash back to, especially if I'm like outside and there's like, trees and stuff like that, because I would, I would wander around, you know, and I'd be singing like to the trees and all of that. And I have this vivid <laughs> memory of, you know, being like, you know, 11 or 12 and I'm, I'm singing out in the field or whatever. And, the breeze would pick up and then you could hear like the leaf, you know, and I used to pretend that was the audience. Oh, <laughs> you know? I love that. Like, oh, the leaves. So now every time like the leaves rustle and I'm like out in like nature, I'm like, oh, they're clapping. That's neat. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's adorable. Did you ever have like a moment, um, watching Shrek with Fiona when she's walking by and, and you know, she, 
<laughs> the bird pops when she sings. That's hilarious. I haven't thought about that in years. Oh, amazing. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's interesting because I always say that, um, you know, music chooses you, not the other way around. You hmm. know, there mm-hmm. was like a definitive choice that I wanted to sing. I just kind of always did, you know? And yeah. Uh, and even before I really even knew what it was, um, I just knew it made me happy. And I loved the, the feeling of it. And uh, it was really therapeutic as well, because I, I know that um, I, you know, I started writing songs around that time, too. And um, my dad uh, carved out a little space in his garage and gave me this, like, four-track task cam tape recorder, you know, um, so that I could go in there and not make so much noise in the house because I was making a lot of noise in the house. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> of course. And, uh-huh. and so, yeah, just fond memories of those beginnings. And um, I, I don't think that that feeling has ever really gone away, which is which is uh, quite the feat. Like, I still, um, I still get that same, like, before we go on stage, I still get that same little, uh, it's not really nerves anymore because I, I, I used to get really nervous when we first started. Mm. But now it's, I, I keep calling it this this kind of beautiful panic, where like your your body almost changes a little bit, and that, and I, I I love that because I feel like if that ever goes away, then I've just you know I've I've let the, the business side take over too much. You know you have to kind of cradle that joy and take care of it. Yeah, you care so much about it, so there should be. I like to I like to call it excitement. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of bubbly excitement right before going on stage. You're like, this is not nerves. I'm just really excited. <laughs> now, um, I, this this might be hard for uh, some people who know me um, now on stage to believe, but I was actually a really shy kid, like mm. really shy, um, to the point that uh, our, my first, you know, real time singing in front of strangers like I would I was afraid to look at anybody um I, you know because <laughs> I, I started on uh on piano first and there's a period of time where I'm just like do I even incorporate the left hand because I need something to grab on to <laughs> <You know? laughs> um and literally I I uh I cite this band as or I, I credit this band for uh bringing me out of my shell because it kind of forced me to have to learn how to do all of this because you grow up listening to your idols and you watch the videos and you're like, how do I do that? How is that? That's so magical. How come they're not nervous? <laughs> they're just, and they're commanding the stage, the stage is their throne. And mm-hmm. uh, so, yeah, I've, I've obviously I've gotten over that. Um, I still get a little, I still have a little bit of that in my private life. I have those moments where I'm not like so rar all the time. <laughs> you know? um, but, uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful thing to kind of, on the other side of that now in, in my yeah. and I also I love that singing is one of the things that we know can help people um, navigate all kinds of um, emotional challenges um, you know if like building your confidence well you can literally do that just by singing um, you don't even have to sing for anybody at first but we know that when you sing it stimulates your body to create happy hormones <laughs> like that's really awesome. And I love, um, one of the things I have so much respect for you on is the, uh, raise your horns campaign essentially, or this, this hashtag, um, that brings a lot of awareness to, um, mental illnesses. And I love the way that singing is, a it's something that anyone can do to literally just make themselves feel better. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, their performance of singing, um, I can't tell you how many times that's saved me. And, you know, and, because, and not, not to necessarily delve into, you know, the, the mess, you know, of, you know, COVID and, and uh, that we've all kind of gone through over the past, you know, couple of years. It's um, when that is taken away from you, when the thing that you love most is essentially stolen from you, this, this joy that you get from performing uh, and performing in front of other people, because that's a relationship, too. That's something that, you know, you can't fill that void with anything else. You just can't. And so it's mm-hmm. it's such a I I I, encur- I encourage everybody to sing, even if they think that they can't, because there is that, like you said, there is that beautiful thing that happens in your body. And it, 
and very scientifically as well. It's actually changing, you know, mm-hmm. um, you, it, you can turn your mood around and you can turn your life around. And um, I know with me, you know, even through song, uh, you know, it, it has become such a huge part of my of my therapy. And uh, I figure things out through singing um, and through putting words out there into the world because it's like, it's like you take all of your, 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 whatever you're singing about, your joy, your problems, your depression, your something, you, you know, you, you manifest it and then you sing it and you put it out there in the world. So then you no longer have to be burdened by it. Mm-hmm. And um, so with, when, with the raise your horns thing, um, that kind of happened on its own. Um, um, one of, uh, my friends, Jill Janice of Huntress, uh, uh, committed suicide a couple of years ago. And after I heard from that, I, after I heard about that, I just felt really, I don't know what it was. It's something kind of took over for me because it wasn't necessarily a concrete choice, but I decided to put something out there and mm-hmm. just said to everybody, like, if you are touched by mental illness in any capacity, either personally or somebody that you know, a family member, take a picture of yourself raising your horns and post it with this hashtag just so everybody can see that you are not alone because this you can feel so alone and there are so many people you know I mean for heaven's sake it doesn't matter to the walk of life you know we lost Chris Cornell um who seemingly was well he he was the the biggest rock star in the world you know seemingly in a good place you know had overcome so many demons and so many obstacles and we still lost him to all of that so it's you're not alone and um, I think that more now than ever, um, we have to kind of do all of this together. You know, we have to lift each other up. And it's become such a beautiful thing because at any point in time um, in any of my socials, I can go into, you know, my mentions or my feed or anything. And there'll always be somebody like, oh, I'm having a really hard day or I don't know how I can do this anymore. And everybody will just jump on it, be like, hey, DM me. Hey, you're going to be fine. Hey. And so I'm just, I'm just the host of the party. This is not me. They are doing this all on their own. And it's just a beautiful thing to be a part of. Yeah. I I love, love, love that so much. I love the support that, um, that you're nurturing in this community. So thank you for for that, you know, from the bottom of my heart. I I don't know whether you're, well, obviously you're doing so many beautiful things, you know, in your life as well. And, um, I remember there being a moment like before, you know, we were signed or did anything. I remember thinking, man, if I ever get to the point where people for better or worse are listening, <laughs> I'm not a doctor, of <laughs> anything that I, I wanted to put that positivity out there. And, and cause there's no reason not to, I have, um, I have this wonderful platform that I am yes. so, you know, blessed to have, uh, you know, it, it blows my mind. And I was like, how did I even get here? This is just very strange. Um, mm-hmm. you know, but, uh, it's good for me too. Cause it makes you feel good. And, and, you know, my, my guys and I talk about that all the time too. Like, even if you're just in an airport and you like somebody's shoes, tell them, tell them they are great. <laughs> you know, <right? laughs> you know, it, because it, not only will it make them feel good, but it makes you feel good too. You, you just, you, and a little taller after that. So. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, and one of the really big things for me is um, is putting out the positivity on, on our platform too. I, I very much relate to that because it's, it's so easy to uh, go in there and listen to singers or bands. And I think anybody can go in there and find something they don't like. Um, but I would much rather go in and talk about like why something is great and break it down and increase the appreciation for people who are doing amazing things like you are. And uh, I I want to build up that positivity in a big way because I feel like it makes our world a better place. And you're doing that as well. Well, you know, you, you know better than it. There's, there's, uh, there's far too much hate and negativity mm-hmm. out there. There just is. And what, what people don't realize too is that it takes a lot of work to be negative. It's like, <laughs> You know, um, it, it, you can fall into that hole and be negative and, mm-hmm. and let it consume you. Um, but uh, there's, just no, there's just no need for it. Why? Why? You know, and I, I see yes. people do that all the time. Like, why did you come to to either my page or somebody else's page? That you you don't need to go there and just spout negativity and spout hate at them. And you know, for, for there's no reason for it. There's just no there's no reason. 
you know, yeah. so it's just a, it's, 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 it's good to be talking to a fellow, um, <laughs> advocate of positive positive advocate I just realized um we were talking about that like moment before going on stage and like working through that and now we're talking about the positivity and uh here's to us was actually a really big song for me for a long time before going on stage I know crazy (laughs) because I was not really into rock or metal for quite a while um really uh the channel has um, exposed me more and increased my appreciation, but here's to us hit me so hard. And, um, I think that the positivity of like working through gunk, <laughs> essentially, <laughs> um, it was such a big thing. And I remember specifically applying that to here's to me and my voice as like together we're working through this journey. If I've had, a string of days or nights when I'm just was like feeling like, oh, the voice is not doing what I want it to do. Um, I feel like I still needed to be like in a really loving relationship with my voice. And, uh, and so, yeah, I don't know. I feel like singing along with you (laughs) in an operatic tone (laughs) and be like singing with me and my voice. (laughs) I'd love to hear that sometime. (laughs) Uh, you know, I you know, I've I've gotten a lot of people tell me what those songs mean. That's the first time that it was actually related to that, and I I I, I love that. And uh, yeah, you know what? It's sometimes the voice can be a pain in the ass, oh, yeah. and, uh, but you got to love it anyway. Oh yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> you know. Um, so that's really cool. That's amazing. Um, you know, it's a funny thing about "Here's to Us." Um, uh, we wrote that for our second record. Um, but that was actually inspired by that same situation I was telling you about where we were stuck in LA. <gasps> that, it's something that we would say to each other. We would literally like when everything was going crazy and we didn't really know what was going to happen. We were kind of like in purgatory. Um, every time something negative would happen or, or set us back, um, we'd, we'd go down to this corner store and buy a really cheap bottle of champagne, like five bucks. <laughs> that's, that's all we could do. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, uh, and we would we'd pop it open and we'd, we'd cheers each other. We would say, here's to us. You know, like, no matter what, we celebrate the good and the bad, you know, because all that really matters is that we're here and we're doing it. You know, it's like. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for that song. Oh, um, <laughs> let's, let's talk about the moments when the voice isn't doing the things you wanted to, right? Uh, I'm just so excited to talk about vocal technique with you. Uh, so since we're on that like subject of, okay, we're human and sometimes our voices, you know, they're just, they're part of our body. You don't sleep well. It doesn't do what it wants you to or what you want it to. Um, if you've, uh, you know, been singing a bunch the day before, sometimes it's just kind of tired. So one of my things that I like to ask artists like you who are on tour and just consistently performing is what do you do when you're not feeling hundred percent vocally to just make sure you're still going to deliver a great performance? Um, well, first and foremost, I think one of the, one of the most important things that I do is keep, uh, keep my, uh, <laughs> my mentality in check because you can literally mm. think yourself out of sync, <laughs> you know, yes. uh, <laughs> in there, you're stressed or whatever it is. And, uh, you know, in the same way that uh, what we're talking about before, those feelings that you get while singing can create these like, mm-hmm. uh, like positive hormones. Um, you know, if you are stressed, um, you can weaken yourself by doing that. That's just a physical thing. So, um, so I definitely give myself the pep talks and everything, and um, and I take it day to day as far as you know. You don't warm up too much. Um, you know, I've been on tour with many of my peers who will like literally start warming up at seven and they don't play till 10. I'm like, what are you doing? And then they're like, why am I tired? I'm like, because you've been singing for hours before you even get on stage. <laughs> um, so I kind of take it day to day. Um, I do a, 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 obviously a mental checklist. And then um, I start trying to see where my, where my voice is at. What are the things mm. that are still there? 
what are some things that are maybe a little tired, a little gravelly or whatever. Mm-hmm. And, then, um, and then instead of starting to warm up, you know, during the day, I will, I will take myself about, probably about an hour or so out and just kind of work through it, rattle it out. Um, a lot mm. of, a lot of light, um, warming up a lot of the, the, the lip and the tongue trills the and the stuff, um, make sure that my breath support is there. And I don't do, I don't do the same warm up every single day. I used to do that when I was a kid, um, after I got out of lessons, I had like my, you know, my 20 minute, this is what I got to go through. And, and, uh, and now it's more or less every day is new. You know, you're in a new town. Um, you know, like you said, maybe you get a whole lot of sleep, bid, you know, maybe there's allergies happening in whatever place you're at. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. No, uh, um, also, I think that the, it's, it's, it's so it's so common sense, but nobody ever does it. But if you're tired, shut up. You know, <laughs> don't just sit there and yap on the phone with somebody. You know, for whatever. Make sure that you give your your voice time to just kind of rest. Uh-huh. Um, as hard as that is, I know. Uh, <laughs> I um, the, there there have uh, only been a, a few times that I've I've put myself on on complete vocal rest for, for a long period of time. And it is the hardest thing that I will ever have to do in my life because I, I can tell I am a talker. So <laughs> I just want to express myself. Um, so uh, there's a lot of that as well. Something, um, a, a trick that I had been using, um, or I, I use occasionally when my voice is really tired or kind of blown. Um, I have a little um, I got these uh, metal cocktail straws, right? Okay. <laughs> We're going to talk about straws, and I'm so excited. That's all. <laughs> I'm glad you're excited about straws. Um, I am. I'm really excited. And, okay, sorry. And I would, <laughs> so I, but I'm essentially um, singing some just kind of long, kind of scooping, uh, you know, just like, woo. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for whatever reason, maybe it's the blowback coming from uh, singing through a straw, like you know you get a little air restriction but it's extremely relaxing and I found that most times um even if it seems like you know the the voice is you know not going to return usually it does through that technique as well so it's like you just have to have kind of a couple tools in your tool belt that you know um what to do and 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 then and then to, to kind of finish it out, you have to almost be, look, I did the very best that I could. I'm going mm-hmm. to go back there. I'm not going to get crazy about it. I'm not going to think about the fact that my voice might be tired tonight. Um, I'm going to keep it light, make sure the air support is there. And uh, and go out there and have fun. And usually, you know, after a couple songs, I forget. I forget that I even mm. was tired. I forget. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, no, that was a really great night. Okay. You know? But so, yeah, it's, it's a journey. <laughs> to get to the end of that but totally okay uh i'm gonna nerd about straws for just a second boy so um i i really i swear that singing on a straw for me revolutionized my singing and then the guy that did the research on straws which is why um like now i you see a lot of people singing through straws um because of some research that was done, like it was around 30 years ago, as Dr. Ingo Tietze is the name of this physicist who uh, went and measured the, the air pressure reflection from things like lip trills or tongue trills and like all of their like SOVT exercises and straw was one of them. And he measured like essentially the efficacy of all these different exercises. And he found that singing through the straw was the best one, which was like, whoa, cool. Right? Like, actually gave us numbers for it. Um, and so I was going to show you, I have, like, I have singing straws. Um, oh, I have a couple God. different kinds. Right? I know. <laughs> so I'm glad you do, too, because sometimes I feel a little insane for carrying around these straws. Um, but, yeah, it's, like, it just, it's a really nice thing to either incorporate into your warm-up or just do when you need to kind of relax thing. Yeah. Um, and I'm just so glad. So glad. <laughs> Because <laughs> I, you know, I've I've explained that, and I, I forget who, um, I think it was Mark Baxter, um, who I've never met, but he was actually a friend of uh, of the singer who taught me how to warm up and, and gave me vocal lessons when I was seven. Um, uh, Steve Whiteman from a band called Kicks back in the eighties, <laughs> and um, um, I, I'll we'll, we'll get into that in a sec, but uh, <laughs> but I uh, I remember 
I, I think I remember him saying something like that. And at that point, I was, you know, maniacally on the internet being like, there has to be like a trick for this because I feel tired and I need to do something and maybe <laughs> I'm not doing it. And, and that was one of them just like, okay, I'll try it, you know. Right. <laughs> Harry, I'll try it. And it was really cool. And um, uh, another thing that I do if my voice is tired or if there's a little bit of, um, you know, as I, I love your term, gunk. Um, <laughs> You know how you can kind of hear that, like, okay, like maybe it's a little phlegm, maybe it's something going yeah. on. Yeah. Um, I like to do some, uh, some gargles with just a little bit of, you know, I, I don't necessarily do a whole lot of the salt water, but it's like, even if it's just kind of like plain water, just see how kind of deep you can get it without drowning yourself. <laughs> you just choke, I just like goes everywhere. <laughs> I've done that. <laughs> what do you do I'm like uh, we'll be backstage and I'll be like gargling like with my head back and like my little will come in and it's like having fun over there and then they'll make me laugh and be like stop that don't try to make me laugh um I'm but, gargling here <laughs> I'm being a professional um it all looks ridiculous but uh I found that to work as well when it's just kind of like one of those things yeah totally 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 I, I love it but I like that um, with a straw, I love when I do a glissando on it, like, you can tell if there's a big gap where you have like a little jump. You're like, oh, oh, that part's going to be rough today, right? That, it's kind of like a, a little magnifying glass. Like cause, mm-hmm. cause sometimes when you're just singing out loud, I know with me, you know, I can miss things because there are, you know, maybe, maybe you're switching uh, resonance areas, you know, which, mm-hmm. you know, I'm super nerdy about that too okay. and uh and uh and I, and and because of you know the fact that i've been doing this a long time i can kind of i can fake my way through a lot that that or i can uh you know just ignore certain things you know whether that's uh-huh. my fault or if i'm doing it on purpose but um with the straw yeah it, it doesn't let you do that you know exactly where those places are so it's a really good tool for if you're just trying to figure out what's going on or what's wrong um yeah, yeah. totally and, I usually go for a guide, like, you can tell when, like, either, you know, when you kind of wake up in the morning or, like, you know, past the normal wake up. You can usually tell with your speaking voice mm-hmm. and where you're holding your breath what kind of day you're going to have. And so, like, that's, like, the mental check, you know, during the day. It's like, all right, we're going to have to figure that out later. But <laughs> <laughs> maybe I have to shut up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so well, let's, let's talk about like how you think about your breath, because you mentioned earlier, like on a different kind of day, you might want to warm up your breath in a different way. Um, I know there's lots of different successful approaches, I think, to breathing, but ultimately like you breathe, you phonate, you shape, that doesn't really change. Um, but what do you feel like is really successful for you as far as, um, just thinking about the process of breathing? Um, I like to think about it as uh, keeping it light and not, you're not, when, when you're singing, you're not, you're not forcing everything through, you know, mm-hmm. and, and um, again, this is going to sound strange for anybody that has heard me sing, but it should always feel effortless. Even the guttural things are an actual technique. I'm not, I'm not actually screaming my head off. It sounds that way. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but breath support is so incredibly important. Um, and I've, I've told that to a lot of young singers. Like if you have, if you have to start somewhere, learn how to support your breath. Um, one of the things uh, that I try to keep in, you know, as a mental check is um, for, for, for girls, it's kind of like um, you're trying to hold up a strapless bra. Oh. You know, it, but a lot of it is, you know, just to keep that posture, um, you know, but, uh, that even breath, you know, it's not like you're trying to like, and then we hold our breath and then we blast it out. It's not any of that. You have mm-hmm. to kind of have that flow. And, um, you know, I do a lot of, uh, uh, you know, just kind of with, you know, I place my hands down, you know, at my, my ribs here, kind of do some of these, you know, some of the thing and just make sure, Okay, that's where the breath is. That's where it's coming in. That's where. Mm-hmm. It's then, um, and then what I, another thing, <laughs> this is a strange one too, um, that I do to kind of warm up my breath is I started to play harmonica. I don't play it well, but there's something about being able to hold a note and make that note happen without you actually singing. Obviously, you're not singing through, huh. but holding the note through that you know 
that harmonica or whatever it is, it, you have no choice but to use your breath to do it. That's a great idea. That as well. Um, well, you know what's funny? <laughs> I, I remember, and I don't play a wind instrument, but um, a lot of my, my idols, Bonnie James Dio, you know, played a <laughs> horn. Um, there's a lot of people that I know that actually play a wind instrument. And I, I never had a, a real interest in doing that, but I'm like, well, harmonica is kind of cool. Oh, and it's not cool. <laughs> I take that back. Harmonica is, is not <laughs> the coolest instrument in the world. But, um, but that has helped me a lot too, and it just and then it it also um, just for the mental capacity of it, it's also fun. So it's mm-hmm. not they're going ha ha ha, you know, it's not yeah. like those, you know, like it's the the normal warm up. Um, but uh, but yeah, you know, and also with uh, uh, I'm I'm not sure uh, whether everyone does things a little differently because a lot of people are just like, Oh, you know, I just do a bunch of sit-ups and stuff. I'm just like, it's not your, it's not your abs. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and, uh, and learning how to, uh, support with your diaphragm. has been, uh, it's just, it's to me, it's the most important thing, especially for, for your stamina, um, or, uh, for your, um, ability to hold out notes. And, uh, and also again, for, for me, you know, singing something high, singing something long, uh, you know, and, uh, and even my, my guttural stuff, it, it needs to have that rest support, but it should mm-hmm. feel effortless. It shouldn't feel like I'm squeezing anything or I'm, I, you know, there should be no tension in everything that you do, as you know, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It's, it's amazing I, hearing you know, talk about this. You know, I, all these things I'm, you know, I'm more speaking to, <laughs> you know, but like, I know I also, I come from the classical background, have trained other genres, but I really like, I'm very solidly based in the voice science perspective of it at this point, like vocology. And I, I love hearing different people from different backgrounds talk about how they're uh, using their instrument to their fullest. And it's just amazing the amount of um, awareness and deliberateness that you are bringing to it. I love that. Well, I, you know, I, I obviously have to remind myself to relax, you know? <laughs> but, but I've, I've, but I've learned over the years to, to understand, like, if I'm not relaxing especially if I'm recording in the studio because um we've been doing a lot of recording lately and when you're recording and it's and it's not necessarily like on stage where you have a lot of distractions it's just you and the mic and I know sometimes like okay well here comes that note that I know is going to be a little challenging for me and I'll psych myself out you know, <laughs> and then I won't hit it with it okay try it again just relax and then as, as soon as I relax it's like oh there it is okay we're right. fine you know, but, uh, yeah, <laughs> I feel like recording sessions are brutal because of that sort of like one space, you and your head, like it's just exactly. it's tough. He's staring at you. Usually there's like engineer or producer or something. It's like, all right. <laughs> Great. It's more nerve wracking than it is. I think, you know, singing for an audience, you know, I think so. Yeah. 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 What, what, do you, what do you do for, um, for, like just kind of breath warm up or, or, uh, uh, do do you have anything? No, yeah, I have, um, I have sort of like a few different things. Um, one is that I like to just make sure that there's like a lot of mobility and, and like fluidity ready to go. So sometimes like just doing like some side stretches just to make sure that the intercostal muscles aren't feeling super tight. Right. Or I like to like flop over and, and breathe there. So I'm remembering to breathe into my backspace because yeah. I know growing up, a lot of us were told to breathe from our stomach, like especially in choirs. And so remembering to breathe kind of like, like almost like a 360 degree inner tube or something that is, I find that helpful. Um, and, uh, panting going, <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that's so helpful to me if for any reason I'm starting to have my breath sit kind of high, yeah. I'll just pant or I'll take a whistle breath in and then it just immediately drops, right? <laughs> I, that's, that's cool about the leaning over because uh, one thing that I do uh, for warm up too, it, I don't necessarily um, stand for this, but I'll be in a chair and just kind of like, right, like, like kind of my elbows kind of on my knees mm-hmm. so that I can feel the back expansion just kind, yeah. of, kind of like an accordion like okay here we go in and out right. <laughs> yeah it's crazy it's like there's so much uh movement that can be had back there and sometimes we forget about it and, and we lose access I think like most people um when we're talking about tidal volume of how much of their total airflow they're using they're using like 10 percent in a normal oh, breath I right know. 
it's nuts. And it's like all up here. But if you really get all of these different things going, you end up having like up to 90%. Do you need that? Mm, Probably not for most things. (laughs) But, you know, something that I I was just talking to um, a young girl about this and breathing. And when, when I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, so like, how do you breathe it? And she was like doing this thing. Like, (laughs) because if you're breathing from your your chest up here, it's just going to slam everything. You're not going to actually get that support. Don't move your shoulders. You're not, you're not hiking it up. And, um, that's, uh, that's really cool. And the, you know, the panting thing. And also, I mean, okay. So I know with the vocals, um, a lot of it is muscle memory, obviously, mm-hmm. but you're, but with the breathing, it can be muscle memory too. So just being able to remind myself of those things, you know, like on, you know, on a semi daily basis, it really helps then you not have to go out there and think, you know, like the yeah. first thing you want to do is be thinking about your technique or thinking about how you should breathe. It should, it should know what to do. So, yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> like, I want you to preach on that. <laughs> like, yes, you go out on stage, your technique is set, you go perform and you think about your message and you deliver. Exactly. Exactly. Nobody wants to, to watch a singer get up there inside their own head. And <laughs> right. <laughs> like, my breathing Oh, right. I, I just love that you also talk about the lightness of the breath and like the way you're not slamming it into your vocals because so many people hear you and they think, oh, she's so powerful. You have this huge range of dynamics, but the power isn't coming because you're slamming your breath into your larynx. It's just, that, that's not what's happening. No, it's not. It, it's breath support, but it's also resonant, you know, whereas you're, when you're creating space, um, I sing a lot from my chest resonance um, mm-hmm. because it's, uh, but I remember the first time that I went into a uh, vocal lesson with Steve Whiteman, um, he said, he's like, you have a very cavernous mouth, like my palate. <laughs> and I'm like, did you just tell me I have a big mouth? <laughs> my mother could have told me that. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's a lot of that and, and learning how to, it, it's almost like it's a church or it's a room, you know? So you have all of these rooms, you have your head, you know? your head, your mask, your chest, you know, and, and there's, you can use all of those things. You can also combine them, you know, which a lot of my, uh, technique for the guttural stuff that I do up top, my screams are actually a, a mix. It's a combination of uh, some falsetto and then, uh, and then some of my head for the higher stuff. But I can also, what I've learned is that I, I actually have a pretty good capacity to bring up um, the, the chest resonance for just, so it's almost, it gets a little tritonal, which, mm-hmm. uh, which is what everyone's hearing with the, with the screams is actually, there's a couple different notes that are happening and I'm kind of letting that happen. But, Do you think about like a, like some sort of like extra, um, constriction, like with the written noise or like, do you think about like anything sort of on top of the, the vocal, you know, the pitch being made? Is there anything up here that you're adding for a little bit of distortion? Uh, just, just a little bit. There's a little bit of, I can feel, you know, kind of the air supply kind of lay back here. And, mm. uh, and, but it's not, it's not affecting this. I can kind of mm. back here. And, mm-hmm. um, and so, again, you're, you're, you have more of a technical term knowledge because I'm just like, it's, I don't know. I feel it here. Um, but <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting because I'm always, I actually have a, I have a hard time. Um, I don't, it's, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, but, uh, there's a lot of, I I don't necessarily do, uh, the vocal fry thing Mm -hmm. to, um, because I know a lot of people do to kind of blast and have that white noise. Um, everything that I do scream wise somehow has some note. There's like a guide. Ah, uh Something I discovered, which I'm still learning how to control, uh, over the past couple of years. This is like, as you enter your thirties and <laughs> your body's changing, uh, there is a, uh-huh. there's a register that opened up, um, up top, um, that I, that I can't always summon, you know, if I'm just kind of with myself, but there are certain spaces where I'm like, Oh, it's ready. Um, I don't know whether it's a, uh, a whistle register or whatever it is, but it's very easy, uh, to hold out long notes or for whatever, the, uh, I guess it's whatever the pressure is that is happening. Mm-hmm. But, there was a point in time where I was able to kind of keep that going, you know, whereas like there's basically kind of like a high note, but then you bring up your, uh, either your head or your chest, uh, resonance with 
that with a similar note. And then it, again, it creates this really weird, um, like dual note situation, not really polyphonic singing. Cause I've, I've seen people do that and that's just mm-hmm. a thing. <laughs> Like they're not from this planet. Um, but, uh, but I feel like maybe something similar, uh, I, I haven't been to anybody to actually check this out, but it, it doesn't hurt me. And it's actually like super easy when it's like decides to be ready. Uh Uh, And it starts in like a a higher pitch and it feels kind of floaty at first. Yeah. A little floaty. It's not, not, it doesn't feel, um, it doesn't feel like a false side of hope. It feels like, um, something a little bit more uh how do I put this a little bit more full or direct mm-hmm. you know than that it's not it's not super airy it's kind of just right there so anyway sorry I'm nerding out on that because I'm just like what is that I should probably talk to you about that uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm super excited about it too I'm like hmm but, it's fun. Yeah. but uh <laughs> so yeah it's interesting how uh the body changes to you know over the course of the and you know you right know, the same thing. Somebody, um, there was a, a, I, I, my, my vocal doctor that, um, I get checkups for and all that. Um, we love our vocal doctors. <laughs> mine is a doctor as I tell out of Boston and, uh, Dr. Z and, uh, he's, he's the absolute best. He's like literally at the top of his, of his field. He like actually has created his own instruments for vocal surgery. Oh, cool. Um, he's talking to me a little bit about what is called, uh, a, a second vocal that happens sometimes and it's more noticeable, obviously, if you are a singer than if you are just, a, you know, just doing, going about your, your daily life. Um, and so uh, when I was explaining some of that to him, he's like, oh, you know, your voice is just, it's evolving as your body does, you know. Yeah. Scientifically, I'm not the same person. Literally, you know, molecules, you know, all of that have changed over the past like seven years. And so Mm -hmm. it's more about, for me, it's more about, um, enjoying that change and not trying to recreate how I sounded in my twenties. Yeah. Um, that, that was there. I'm glad we recorded it. It is, but you know, I have a different voice now and, uh, and, and I, I like adapting to that and evolving and then discovering new things. Um, I love that you're talking about that because there's, it's like such a challenging thing. I think, especially for women, like there's so many different cycles that our bodies are going through. Like there's like a monthly one. There's like, well, we obviously have like puberty, but then there's another sort of shift that often happens in the thirties. And then there's another shift when we get towards menopause. There's a book that, um, I can't remember. I sh- I'm, should be shot for not remembering this right now. Um, but I think it's called Singing Through Change. And it's exactly about that process of how our bodies are evolving. And it's just crazy. Our instrument is inside of our body, so we have to evolve with it. Yeah. And I think it's hard when people self-identify. I know this from so much experience of self-identifying with my voice. Um it's hard to go through that change with it and be okay with your voice evolving into something that you might not have expected. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's, it's important to, you know, remind ourselves that, um, that everybody goes through it. You know, even, even if you can still hit the notes that you did in your twenties, it's not in the same way. It's just mm-hmm. not. And, uh, and, and that's okay. You know, it's kind of like accepting, um, the fact that I have smile lines now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> the way it is. Um, too many meet and greets, you know, <laughs> I'm smiling. um, but, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, it, it's interesting. And, um, oh, something I wanted to touch on too, just while we're in, you know, kind of vocal mode is, uh, is hydration. Oh, very so important. Very important. A lot of times, I'm actually better at it when we're on tour because there's like a mission and I've got, you know, but I've, I've literally like gotten myself like this, like huge water bottle thing. And I try to get through, like, I, you know, I have to try to get through at least like two of these or whatever. You have to keep yourself lubricated mm-hmm. um, because with the, uh, with your vocal, I'm not, I, I'm preaching to the choir with you, but I, we're obviously preach yes we're watching Um, (laughs) but with your vocal folds you know there's there's friction there is and you know even if you're just kind of putting your the way i I like to describe it's like if you are you know rubbing your hands together like this it's creating heat 
you know, and if that heat, you know, if you don't have that lubrication, that heat will make your vocal folds swell. And ultimately you're going to lose some top end. Maybe you're going to get tired more often. Just that lubrication is so important. I, I feel like there was a statistic that I read about that, like 80% of vocal problems are usually because of lack of water and lack of hydration. And um, I know we all get tired of it. You know, I, I get sick of the taste of water. I get sick of all that stuff. Um, I actually have these little, um, uh, they're called water drops mm. that I'm using. And it's, it's, uh, it, there, there isn't any like weird sugar or anything in it, but it does have a slight taste, you know, like I'll have like a little peach one or, you know, <laughs> just to keep, just to keep myself, keep it interesting so that I mm-hmm. don't just be like, okay, I'm just like, no, 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 the thing about water now, you know, but. I used to mix a little bit of lychee juice into my water backstage. <laughs> same, same. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, I, uh, I just, well, what was I doing before? There, there was a point in time where I was putting a little bit of Himalayan salts in there, uh, but just but only 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 for the reason of uh, just like the electrolytes that you can get. Yeah, with that, you know, especially mm-hmm. like out doing festivals and you know you're playing and the sun is right in your face and it's like, Oof. Oh, so. yeah. That same doctor who did the straw research, um, I think it was more recently that he did a, a study with some other colleagues and they looked essentially at uh, water and hydration and how it affected um, the threshold of phonation. So when that pressure is coming up, basically saying, well, how much pressure do you need to start a note if you're well hydrated versus not well hydrated? And it just confirmed like everything that we're talking about. It is more difficult to sing um, if you're not as well hydrated, like the like outer layer of the mucosa there essentially like isn't as willing to like vibrate and then gets like more stiff and icky and that can affect then like sort of the inner layer, make it more swelly or it can make it so it, it just, um, you can get like more like gunky phlegm on it. That's harder to kick off. <laughs> so it's harder to kick off and it's harder to control, you know, you lose mm-hmm. that kind of control. And, uh, and while we're on the subject of, uh, of water, um, that does not mean beer, and that does not mean coffee. <laughs> Wondering, it's like, well, there's water in beer. No, that's not, that's not going to help you. <laughs> I always thought that coffee and caffeine made my vibrato faster, and that was recently confirmed that caffeine can actually make your vibrato faster. You know what? That is, that is, I'm so glad you said that, because that is good to, to remind myself of, and I actually I think that I know... There, there was a moment uh, when, we were, when we were recording where it's like, I, I did have my water, but, you know, I had my coffee. It was kind of early and whatever. And there and there was that little, like, almost, you know, because I, I try to control my vibrato and, and all of that, you know. But there was, yeah, that, that slight <laughs> uncontrollable, like, okay, I just, I sound like a, I sound like a sheep now. Let's, let's back it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> You're like, okay. Oh, I'm a <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> well, I, you know, just one other thing I, I really want to hit on with um, some vocal technique that I think is so fascinating about your voice is the way that you're shifting um, like different resonances in here. I love, um, I see the way that you use your teeth, which is something that, you know, classical singers we would never do that. I love like the like feeling there. And it also sounds like sometimes you're really deliberately like adding like a little bit of soft palate drop to like get like a little more of that nasal resonance, which some people are super scared of to add that instead of like it gives you the snarl in your sound at times. So can you talk a little bit about like how you think about mouth shaping or like the different muscles in here to shape your sound? Well, it's, you're, you're guiding, you're guiding the notes, you're guiding the air. And, and uh, I, I, I really love doing that, especially um, for certain songs and, and for certain times on stage, you know, the, uh, the mask and through, through that soft palette, um, you're, I'm basically manipulating it as I go, <laughs> you know, and, and that's interesting that you say about my teeth, cause I never even really th- thought about that before, but I, I <laughs> did a lot, um, you know, like we were talking about before, you know, it's a room that you get to use. And so, you know, in, well, I guess you can't really see it around here, but like if you're in a room and you put you know, some, you know, uh, foam or something up on the walls, it's going to change the sound of the room. If there's a carpet in there, it's going to change the sound of the room. So basically I'm just moving the furniture around, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. to create the sound that I want to 
that I want to deliberately do. And, um, and so, yeah, a lot of it is that guiding of the air. And then I like, I like the switch. I, I, I don't know why, but it like feels good to me when I'm singing, you know, if I'm singing here versus singing here, you know, versus up here versus like that kind of full chest. So mm-hmm. That transition always kind of just even just physically feels really nice. <laughs> so, so when I'm, and, and depending on your attitude, like for, like for instance, um, you know, if we are singing a song, you know, like, uh, like one of our songs, I am the fire where I'm kind of down here. Like, am I brave enough? So I'm down there. Sacrifice. Um, but then uh, with another song called Miss Hyde, it's like a little bit different personality. So I'm just like, in the daylight, I'm your sweetheart. You know, so it's like a little bit more in, in the nose um, without sounding too, you know. But you can, <laughs> so so what, what I like to do even in warm ups too is kind of overdo that to the point that it's kind of like it's not it sounds like, you know, I'm I'm. Whatever, yeah. uh-huh. circle or whatever and, and and then and then take it away and bring other things you know just kind of these muscles here um having an open mouth is very important to me in a lot of t- doing those things just to keep that reverberation going so uh-huh. that that is a factor um as that well. is something i've complimented you on in videos multiple times <laughs> i'm glad <laughs> thank you <laughs> It's interesting how, like, you see, uh, you, you, I, I know I see a lot of singers that kind of are a little bit more closed mouth, and, and I, I always think of it like, if you open it up a little bit, it would actually be louder. <laughs> like, it's, it sounds like common sense, but a lot of people don't. And there's, um, you know, like, like I keep saying, there is that reverberation that happens, and then if you're able to kind of manipulate your soft palate up top, and then, and then kind of move around and trying to create create your perfect space for whatever note whatever you're trying to do Mm -hmm. you know out throw out there to people um you know it's seriously one of my favorite things so I'm glad you brought that up it's like so much fun I feel like it's like you have like a little playground inside (laughs) absolutely and and you know there's just so many different ways that you can use your voice and um something that I get that that is very important to me when we're creating a set list as well. Uh, not, not just the fact that, you know, okay, let's, it, I don't know. I, I like showing everything. I want to show my entire, uh, you know, catalog or, or whatever you want to call it. My, my, mm-hmm. rank, my, or how, you know, I talk about with my guys, all of my peers. Because mm-hmm. if, be, if I'm going to be screaming my head off in one song, I want to go, now the next song, okay, now we're going to do a ballad and we're going to come and, and, and I'm going to be super clear because I think that a lot of, I think that, um, not all singers, but a lot of singers kind of, they pick one ear and they stick with it. And a lot of yeah. people are really, you know, obviously I'm not knocking that. A lot of people are really successful doing that. This is my sound and this is how I sound all the time. Um, that's totally cool. Um, that's, that's not part of my, part of my joy is, is, uh, and this is going to sound like I'm saying I like to show off, but I do, you know, I like, <laughs> I like to show all of the different areas, mainly because it's just fun for me, you know? And also if you are maybe, you know, cause we play, you know, we don't really play any less than a 90 minute, set, you know, some, mm-hmm. some more. we've also done evening with tours where we don't have an opener and we're just doing the whole night. So it, even even in the aspect of stamina, by switching those things up and by utilizing all of these different areas, you're not you're you're not just slamming the same area and the same you know even if it's uh, you know key wise you know by switching all of those things up and using everything that you have, mm-hmm. uh, not just to show off for an audience but also to, to just just you know to not tire yourself out. You're, God, that helps with the longevity for yeah, sure. You're, you're passing the ball. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. It really does. I, like, and, I think it makes sense. It makes sense in my head. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got this tour that's coming up, right? This is this is about to happen. You, uh, Hailstorm and Evanescence, right? Yes. Yes. Um, I remember. 
we are we are um we are planning to come and see you. We're trying to work out the exact uh, time because the, when you're in Arizona, we are in a different place. So we're trying to catch you actually a different spot, but uh, it's going to happen. Not sure where. I've got a couple options right now. But that being said, um, people haven't been touring and you're talking about like, all these different things you're about to do on tour. I want to know, especially because we've had COVID and just sort of a, a big shift in life. What are you doing to prepare for this tour? Um, well, that's different from regular life, but also maybe that might be different this year because of all of the, because of COVID. Well, I, we're, we're kind of, it's going to be a little bit of an experiment. We actually go out um, on tour uh, this Monday for a two week run. Ooh. Um, and it's going to be the weirdest tour we've ever done. We actually have a, you know, a, a complete manifesto of the things that we are going to be allowing ourselves and our crew to do, um, for, you know, and, and, and the hard nose and, and it's oh. going gonna, gonna to be strange because, um, well, obviously <laughs> we're going to be getting swabbed like every day. My nose is not going to be the same. Um, so we're going to, we're going to be getting tested. Um, there's, unfortunately there is like no communal aspect. You know, we, we do have, um, some very lovely openers, you know, um, that we're not going to necessarily be able to hang out with. Um, unfortunately, mm. there's not going to be any meet and greets. It's basically going to be, um, we're masked up. Nobody goes out and around town, obviously no one's going to, no one's going to bars or restaurants, any of that. Um, uh, and basically you're, you're in the bus or whatever outside of the bus, you know, until warm up time, we'll all go in, we'll mask up even with, even if it's just with each other, um, do our warm ups and, and jam a little bit with each other. And then... We, yeah, I, I'm the only time I'm going to really take it off is is when I'm walking a stage to go and sing, and you get to sing in front of a lot of people, and then you go right back to the bus. And so it's it's going to be it's going to yeah. be I, I I you know part of part of what I love about being on tour is that social aspect and being able to meet people and talk to them and um, and give hugs, all of those things. That's been a huge part of my life, and unfortunately, that's not going to be able to happen this time. Um, so, uh, but to, in, in a positive sense, I'm actually like, I'm looking forward to, you know, bonding with my band and my crew. Cause that's all, that's the only people that I'm allowed to play with. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, and also I feel like if the only real, um, social aspect is going to be performing that might actually I don't know. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that feels because it's almost like you're depriving yourself of something <gasps> oh. wonderful. And then you walk out on stage and you just get to live in the moment and just appreciate it and not take that for granted. So I'm feeling like these performances will be really, really like just heightened in a certain way. I think we're all just going to be really excited. <laughs> yeah. um, so, That's so special. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Like it's, you haven't been able to engage with these humans and this is like your one moment to get to do it. And it's not, you don't get to see them in the other aspects that you were used to. So you get that one special moment when you're on stage and really that's a moment between you and the audience. It's a relationship. It's shared. That's great. Yeah. And not taking any of those little moments for, for granted and making them count, you know? <laughs> and so, uh, but it, it, you know, look, I never go on stage and just call it in. Mm -mm. Uh, but that will obviously, even if I wanted to, I don't think that would <laughs> be able to happen <laughs> on this tour. But, um, and then, so hopefully by the time November comes around, things will be different. I'm not quite sure because we all thought it was going to be different now. Yeah. Um, and you know, we're, we, we are kind of nervous about it only because I see all of my peers, you know, that are singers just kind of dropping like flies because we're all trying to make all of this work, even if we're being the most careful that we can. So, you know, hopefully fingers crossed. Um, but, uh, yeah. with, but you know, when we're out in November with Amy, I am so looking forward to being out on tour. Um, Amy Lee and I have been friends for years. Um, she's a beautiful, beautiful human. Um, I don't know whether you've ever met Amy, but you'll definitely have to when you come out and see the show. We'll roll up the red carpet for you. Uh, <laughs> we don't necessarily have a carpet, but it's, a, it's you know. <laughs> it could be black carpet. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but she's... But, you know, speaking of just vocals, she's got the, one of the most beautiful voices, um, you know, I, I want to say of, of our generation, but I think it's probably of all time. Um, I got to uh, 
do a, I, I've duetted with her, you know, many, many a times. And then we actually recorded um, a duet with her and I. Um, she, she loved a song off of our second record uh, called Break In. And when we were out on tour together for the first time in 2012, um, she came into my dressing room and she's like, hey, you're doing um, Break In, this ballad on piano. And she's like, nobody's doing any harmonies with you. I'm like, dude. I'm not going to make my guys do those high harmonies. <laughs> and she's like, well, can I sing with you? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you can sing the lead too. She's like, no, I really love harmonies. I just want to come out and do harmonies. So, so I would start the song and there would always be this moment where I knew that she was like about to like walk out and start her part because all of a sudden, like the, the vibe in the room changed, you know? <laughs> well, that, like, like the feeling changes what she wants. Mm-hmm. And, um, and she'd come out and she'd, she'd sing with me. And when we, when we recorded the duet, um, a couple of years ago, we ended up just kind of making it official and did that. We did that, um, as a performance, we, um, we, we were about six feet apart in the same room, different mic. And we would perform the song from beginning to end. And so we, I think we did about six takes and we ended up, uh, using the fifth. Wow. So you didn't comp it or anything like that. And which, which, uh, which (laughs) poor thing. Um, she didn't realize this because nobody had told her. Um, we both, uh, we walked in the studio and, um, our mutual producer who has done um, our records and hers recorded it with us. And, uh, we walked in the room and there's just two mics. I'm like, so I'm not going to like do takes and sing my parts and then she does her part. He's like, he's like, nope, you're going to be standing here and you're going to be singing it together. And um, it was so beautiful because I've never sung with a singer like this where it's almost like, and she, she describes it this way too, but it's almost like a tennis match where you're like evenly matched, but we have, we have two totally different voices oh, yeah. We're oh, yeah. Really together. And so it was actually really beautiful to perform the song with her because you could actually, I don't know, you could just, feel almost predict where she was going to go and we would be dipping and sometimes she would take the melody sometimes I would take the harmony and and then you know just that dance you know it's a beautiful dance and uh and I okay so a small moment before we started recording right so we're sitting down and we're having our tea (laughs) yes and uh you know while the engineer is setting up a couple other things and and she's like well we should probably just kind of go over the parts right and so i'm like yeah and so without even thinking we just started singing a cappella together right and so we sang the whole song sitting there with our team acapella. and then she's like oh i'm gonna go refresh my team walk out the room and i turned to our producer i'm like do you know how hard that would be to do with any other singer on the planet you know because not only you know is it, you know, you don't have the beat, you don't have the note, anything. Singing a cappella and keeping it on key hmm. and all of that without any reference is a hard thing to do. You have to learn how to trust yourself. But the fact that we just kind of went, just went for it and did it without even thinking. And then it was just, it was perfect. It was there. I'm like, just amazing. So it's truly, <laughs> it was truly just, you know, an unearthly uh, thing to be a part of. So I'm, I'm really looking forward um, to being out on tour with her and getting to experience that again, because obviously we're going to sing together because if we don't <laughs> sing together, there's going to be lots of angry people. <laughs> we don't want to do it. So, um, so I, I can't wait to do that with, with them. And, and she, and, you know, regardless of being such an amazing singer, she's one of those humans that no matter how much time has gone by, you know, like, that we haven't seen each other. We just pick up right where we left off. It's just mm. it always remained that way. So just golden human. You've got to keep those people close. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, I love, I love that story. And I feel like sometimes as a singer, like sometimes you find people or just like sort of matches that happen and it's, it's rare and it's so precious. <laughs> it really is. It really is. It, you have to appreciate that and, and understand that there's a magic to that. And, mm-hmm. and, it's, and it's not even about either one of us. It just, the magic exists and, you know, we, we can be those, that, that vessel. For mm-hmm. that. So it's just, it's just more about like, it's just something to, that you're a part of, you know, yeah. and we're experiencing in real time, you know? So. I'm really curious. Um, because you've done so many collaborations with people and, um, and they've spanned a lot of different genres as well at this point. Um, do you have any advice, you know, I'm thinking like 
if we're Eric Church, Lindsey Sterling, The Who, like, how do you maintain you and your like authentic identity when you're collaborating with another person, but also meet them in a way that creates uh, a very uh, interwoven product? That, that's a really interesting question. Um, well, first and foremost, I'm very lucky to um, everyone that I have collaborated with has not wanted to be, has not wanted me to be anything other than myself. Mm-hmm. Um, to the point, it, it, actually, Eric Church was kind of the first person to actually say that out loud. Uh, <laughs> he he came into uh, our dressing room when we went out on tour with him. And he's like, I don't want you to do any ballads. Don't cater to the audience. Don't do a country cover, nothing. You are a rock band. I want you to come out swinging. You're here for a reason. And when I uh, sang with him um, at the CMAs, what a beautiful man. So we, we had rehearsals the day before. And uh, and I kind of, you know, we, I had my part. He had his. And it was all working. Mm-hmm. And then I'm not kidding you one minute before we go on stage and the and it's live and cameras and all of that he's about to get like i don't know whether you saw that that uh live performance of that but he gets like kind of um brought up in this elevator shaft thing and uh and right before he's like he's like lizzie lizzie we're back he's like, come here come here he's like i just had an idea you know you know there's like a, a part like right before the last chorus like you know where we were kind of like jammed with each other he's like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna step out of that one, I'm going to step back and you just do something cool. I'm like, uh, <laughs> so I'm like, wait, 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 what? We're not doing what we want. You know, so, so to his credit, he let me have that moment. Uh-huh. But, you know, of course, when you're up there, and that's the beauty of, of live music, too, because, uh, and it's a big reason why we don't use any tracks, there's no trickery, I'm never miming anything that I do, is because there is that, you know, my, my guitar player said this all the time, that's where life happens. When you are in the moment, and it could either be a complete train wreck, or it could be <laughs> magical that will never happen again and that's up to you and so it's almost like your your body takes over you're not even thinking you know it's all like, I'm like okay i just have i have to i i have to do this there's no there's no choice and uh so um so it, anyway i digress but that was a really cool moment and uh i remember and then i watched it later you know and i'm looking at my face and i'm like oh i'm not even home i'm totally like i blacked out somewhere i just let <laughs> I let it all take over, you know, so I'm like, oh yeah, no, I'm, I'm a not home. That's just, that's whatever's happening. Um, but, uh, but as far as, you know, my, uh, what I do to kind of approach all of those things is that, you know, there's a spectrum to what I do that is within the parameters of what I'm comfortable with in and also what I'm proud to represent, proud to represent mm-hmm. my genre. I'm proud to, to, to sing the way that I do. You know, I'm proud to be a woman in this genre. And, um, and so there is like, there is a, a lovely spectrum of things that I can go from this side to that side. So really I kind of keep it within that, those parameters. Um, and the, the wonderful thing is, is that um, that's the thing about rock and roll is that everybody, everybody, wants to be the rock star, whether you're in your country or you're in pop or, you know, or rap, everybody is totally okay with me walking on in a leather jacket and, <laughs> and let's rip some, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, but it's, 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 it's a beautiful example, I guess, of the power of music is that it doesn't, if it's good, it's good, you know, and, and, you know, with whether it's, you know, like you said, like you know, with Eric Church or Lindsey Sterling or The Who or, um, you know, Corey Marks or Corey Taylor or, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, I'm doing it. I think that it's just, it's more about the overall magic yeah. of it and not necessarily we're going to battle out some genres, you know, um, it's, it's a, you know, it's a hmm. safe space for both of us to just express what we are, you know. That, like, that answer just, it was pure gold. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to give you gold. <laughs> I, I feel it showering down. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> it's, it was amazing. Uh, <laughs> like a penny, I just had pennies from heaven enter my oh. penny out, right? <laughs> <laughs> I I just I I need you to like write my bio like I, all of your technology is just so like amazing and it's like that's really sweet. that's just like you know huge compliment thank you <laughs> thank you I'm gonna I'm gonna sip my tea now oh yeah okay well let's sip some tea I'm going over some of those I have just a few more and then we're gonna do some patron questions uh, I so I'm really curious about uh, the production. Hmm. Whew. Okay, vocal production. So I really dig it when I hear like all of these layers and these harmonies and um, the different spatialization of them as well. And I'm curious how much you're involved, um, uh, you know, writing your own harmonies. I know some singers don't write their own harmonies. Sometimes it's suggested by producers you're working with. Um, and I'm curious about like the extra tidbits when you're recording them. Do you think like, oh, I want this backed off? And when you're listening to that mix, you say, oh, I want these uh, harmonies more to the side and I want to double my voice in the center. Like what, how much do you play a role in that? And can you talk a little bit about that process? Yeah. Um, I've been extremely lucky, lucky to have, uh, like I said, for better or worse, um, a lot of creative control, maybe too much mm. sometimes. Um, <laughs> Because I can go to work, but um, especially over the past couple of years, um, you know, uh, really, um, I think it's been all of them, uh, except for Lindsay Sterling. Um, I think it's been all of my collaborations I've done by myself, um, and just kind of in wow. in the room, um, especially past couple of years, um, because uh, <laughs> you know we're at home and I got to do it myself. But uh, but yeah, I I have produced my vocals, I've comped my vocals. Um, I, I write my, my own arrangements, um, I write my own harmony. Um, and, uh, and, and there's a, uh, I've gotten into like, kind of like a go-to, you know, where, especially if I'm doing something, uh, and having to send it in, you know, to a producer, like if I'm doing a collaboration or a guest on something, um, I'll, I'll usually give them a little too much so that, you know, if it is too much, they can take that away. But uh-huh. I love doing, um, I love giving uh, different, like at least two um, different uh, performances, you know, mm. as far as like, like what we were saying before, like from beginning to end, like I'm performing on stage. Um, and then I will give obviously uh, some of the comp, whatever for verses, choruses, harmonies. Um, I usually do um, uh, a double for, for everything. Um, and mm. what I like to do for harmonies um, is I like to create a kind of a pad first. So it's almost like it's almost like you're singing, not extremely, you're not, you're not really emoting. It's almost like you, you, you turn into, you know, kind of a, you know, robot person of yourself. Um, and, and you make them very clean and, mm-hmm. uh, and then you stack all of those. So like, I'll get, you know, so if I'm doing, um, a harmony pad underneath, um, I'll double that. Um, and then I'll do, or I'll, and then, uh, I'll do either an octave up or an octave down of that, and mm-hmm. that so that there is that nice situation. Then I'll do, um, you know, and depending on, on what's needed, because sometimes, um, uh, tri harmonies are a little too train whistle. And so I, I like, I like to, to play, I like to, I like to, to play uh, with, you know, cause I'll start, I'll start out just kind of following the melody with the mm-hmm. harmony, you know, simple, you know thirds, fifths, that kind of thing. And then I'll start to make it a little bit more interesting. So you kind of farm it out a little bit. Like, whereas like, well, maybe, yes, maybe it sounds good because it's just kind of following the melody, but is it the right note to deliver what you're trying to say? Is it distracting? Mm-hmm. So I'll be doing that as well. Um, something that I've um, actually been doing off and on when I am actually uh, doubling my vocal is um, I'll do it a couple of times with the instrumentation and then I'll actually um once I get the the the, once I trust the muscle memory in it um I'll turn off the track and I'll sing with a click and with the other uh vocal just kind of follow with it because you can actually you can hear um just a little bit more of the inflections Mm -hmm. and really get it to match up super nice if you want that really tight double so I've been doing that as well that's Um, a good idea then there's always something, there's always has to be something, this is just my checklist, um, there always has to be some, 
either note or some type of uh, something that brings it a little bit over the top. And whether that is, you know, just involved in the, um, uh, just kind of, you know, what, 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 what's the right term to use? Not scatting, but just kind of like, you know, th- just uh, having just kind of a performance piece at the end where you're just kind of going off the cuff. And oh, like a free form, just like... like a form mm-hmm. I could not think of the correct word. Um, there always has to be something like that because I always feel like at first I, I, I wasn't totally going over the top. And then what I realized is that every time I would send in the over the top things, that's what they would want to keep. So really I have a thing. Um, so, but, so yeah, it's just, it's kind of like knowing your checklist, knowing where you want to start. Um, you know, usually I'll start, especially if it's a new song. Um, something that I noticed is that I I will actually build the track and then I will end up at least with the the main vocal doing it over again, like kind of re-recording it once I know it all because you do sing differently when you don't have to look at lyrics Yes, when everything is already kind of you're familiar with the track. It's actually a very audible difference. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, so I always try to give myself time for that as well. Um, I'm trying to think if I've missed any, anything here. Uh, um, <laughs> I don't know. Oh, also as far as like gears go, um, in the same aspect that, mm-hmm. that, I, that I use live, um, I like to have a little bit of a, a variety of just, just use, utilizing either different um, uh, different resonance areas or different personalities. Because sometimes if you put in, if you like, even if it's just the double or uh, or the harmony, if it's a different personality, there it, you can kind of it makes it makes it feel like there are layers. It actually sounds like more full instead of you just kind of doing the same thing over and over again in the same way. So I like to do that as well. Um, but I get super, like, I get super, like, down the rabbit hole with it. And that's been a lot of fun, especially when I'm doing it um, by myself because it's just kind of me in my own world. And huh. then you have to learn to trust yourself as to when it's right versus, like, oh, I'm just doing it, you know. So, yeah, uh, so yeah I don't... Um, much, much to my chagrin, I don't settle. <laughs> so usually, it's just like, okay, that's not right yet. Let's do that in a different way. Um, and and a lot, and then a lot of times, you know, the uh, the right thing kind of finds you, you know. Whereas, like, you know that feeling when it's like, okay, that's that's it. For, You're like, that's it. For instance, uh, with <laughs> with the Who track, uh, song of of, of uh, women. It's uh that was one of the the coolest collaborations I've ever done. It's also the weirdest way I've ever written a song. So they they had the song um, and it already exists existed in Mongolian. Mm-hmm. And basically, I got on the on the telephone with their managers and was like, here's what the guys want you to do. We want you to pretend like all of their chanting and their singing is just part of the instruments, and we want you to write a new song on top of that song in English. And they're like, here's the subject matter, but go, you know, we're not going to send you, they weren't going to send me like the lyrics translated. They're just like, just go. So it took me about, it took me about three days to write, but I was actually, I was in this room. I have a small vocal booth and um, it's very warm in there. (laughs) 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 Circulation. Um, It's on my list, but, um, (laughs) but it's, but it's interesting when all of a sudden you, you hear all of a sudden everything kind of clicked, you know, it's like, and it's, it's almost something that I can't really describe, but you just know in your body and in your soul when it's, when the magic is there, you know? And, um, and it was really, I don't know. It was really beautiful. And then, and then I got really nervous cause I sent it in. I did, I, 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 I recorded that here. I contacted all my own vocals and, and um, did all the stuff and got it to the point where I'm just like, I think this is really special. And I showed it to, uh, to my guitar player and bass player. And they're like, Oh no, this is like really beautiful. I'm like, you think, yeah. okay, I'll send it in. And I sent it in. And like, I, it was like 24 hours. I didn't hear anything. And I'm like, Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> did I ruin their song? And then I got this really lovely email just telling me that it was just, that's exactly what that, what they wanted. I'm like, Oh good. That's awesome. And, and to, and to this day, it's so funny. Cause uh, like all of our parents, you know, like all of the moms are like, I love that song so much. It's like, you know, because yeah. there's, there, you know, there's certain family members that they, they 
they pick and choose the songs of mine that they're okay listening to. Sometimes <laughs> 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 it's like denial is a beautiful thing. Um, <laughs> my my guitar player's great aunt uh, came to see us uh, years ago, and and she's like, I just love that I get by song, and I'm like, well, it, it's I get off, and she's like. No, but I, I'm pretty sure it's I, I Get By. I really like it. I mean, I'm like, that's okay. It can be I Get By to you. <laughs> no. so, so, yeah, so it's it's good to have, like, those, you know, I, I love making those moments for, you know, uh, for anyone who doesn't necessarily, you know, want to be listening, you know, about sex or hearing swearing or anything <laughs> you know so uh, yeah that that was a really beautiful thing and those boys are so lovely um we there's a, a huge language barrier so we don't really sit down and talk but every time we see each other when we did the video all showed up and everyone's like oh yeah oh. <laughs> no need for words you know and it's a you know like we keep saying that's just uh that's just the power of music yeah that was that was a really extraordinary, uh, very extraordinary music video, and I loved the layering in it. And I really like. I I hear what you're saying. It feels like it. It's not just good. It's magical. It transcends yeah. into that, and it's really extraordinary. And, and that doesn't always happen. But you have to kind of always, when you sit down and you're going to do something like that, and you're you're recording yourself or you're putting something out there you're creating you know it doesn't always turn out magical of course mm -hmm. but you have to kind of expect that go in expecting that greatness of yourself or you're never going to be open to it and mm. uh, I remember being like thank you muse whoever you are <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. that makes sense oh well I think I'm just going to ask you one more question here, and then uh, I'll head over to some Patreon questions. Um, I want to know what you think the best and worst thing about your profession is. So, like, what's the best and worst thing about being a singer? Um, I mean, as far as a, oh, as a singer, I suppose. Um, you know, I, if you want to expand it to include guitar and... Uh, I was going to say, like, the music business is the worst. Um, but, uh, but as far as being a singer, um, the most wonderful thing about it is that it is the, it's the human connection that you get from singing and sharing your words and having this be a physical instrument that you, and you're, you're literally sharing your, your soul with other people and, mm -hmm. and you're changing somebody's life with a, with a note, with a line, with whatever you're doing. Cause you know, and I'm not even talking about songwriting because songwriting you, any you can write a good song a song can be great but if you do not feel it in your soul and you are not um if it's not honest to you and you're not delivering it in an honest way um it's not going to work you know and it's mm. just not it's it has to be the right thing and and you have you have to it's 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 a vulnerability hmm. be willing to Stand up there, and it—it's up to you to do that, and uh, and and you have to be vulnerable. You have to let people in, and you have to give all of yourself. And that's that's the most beautiful thing about being a singer. Um, the most—it's not the worst, but the most annoying thing about being a singer is that you know you can't just uh, you know the way that my guys do it. You can't just stay out till four in the morning, you know, talking. And mm -hmm. um, if you get a cold, that or or something like that on tour, it's going to affect you more than it does your guitar player, your bass player, your drummer. It, it just is. And, um, I always tell this to my little, my little brother's in my band. He's my drummer. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, he has, he has a very physically demanding job that he, and he really takes care of himself for that as well. Um, but I always tell him, I'm just like, man, it doesn't matter what Joe or Josh are doing over there. It really doesn't. I mean, it does, they shouldn't screw up on, you know, or, or be lazy, <laughs> but if, if, I'm off or if you're off, you know, the, the entire thing, you know, is off the rails. So it's like a lot of responsibility. It just is. Hmm. And I've over the course of, of the years had to learn um, to not look at it in a negative way and look at that responsibility to myself, my bandmates, to the audience, um, to my physical well-being, my mental well-being. Um, I've had, I, I, 
I choose to look at it, that responsibility as a gift and almost like it's a, almost like it's, it's a superpower. And yeah. it's something that obviously there's going to be things that you can't control. I'm going to have an off night. I'm going to forget stuff. Um, you know, I'm going to be flat or sharp or it's just going to happen. <laughs> but as long as I know in my heart that I did everything that I possibly could and, um, and I'm being smart, um, which I haven't always been. Uh, <laughs> it's, 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 hard, it's hard to wear, um, to wear that responsibility and have that weight on your shoulders because you have those moments where you're like, man, you know, why can't I just be like all these other people and just like, <laughs> ah, you know, it's like, but you can't, you know, that is, that's, that's the path that not only, it, you know, was chosen for you, but it's part of it's part of keeping your joy alive, you know? Mm. So I, so I've had to learn. It was like, <laughs> there was like one time, uh, this was a couple years ago, we were overseas and, um, all of the guys, I think we were in Berlin and all of the guys, it was like 10 o'clock at night or something. We we're on the bus and the guys were like, Oh man, you know where we should go? We should go to this, this, you know, bar. It's kind of like famous, like, you know, Bowie stayed there and all that stuff. And, and I'm looking at them and I'm just like, I would love to go out with you guys in the <laughs> bar, but we've, you know, we, we had had something we had, had uh, I, I think it was a, a radio station interview or something early in the morning. And then we had the show the next day and I'm just like, I'm going to stay here, <laughs> and just, oh. you, know, you know, and be a monk and, you know, do the whole thing. And I remember like after they left, it was kind of being like super jealous about it. And then I had to kind of like sit myself down, like, no, this is your, this is your space in life and you're doing you're doing what you have to do to keep that fire and that joy alive. So anyway, for, for anybody listening that may or may not have felt as a singer, like, okay, you know, (laughs) being the out, the outsider or the, the, or the one with the most responsibility, it's okay. You know, we all go through it and, uh, and it's actually a good thing. So (laughs) I, that was a that was a very good spin. I feel like I'm the worst thing. You're like, let's make it positive. <laughs> I loved it. You know me. All right, a few Patreon questions for you. Um, this is so cool. I love it. They, um, yeah, we have like such a supportive Patreon community, and that tends to be a lot of our super fans as well. So you can be sure that they have watched a bunch of the videos with you. And uh, yeah. Lucky. Judging, I want to say. <laughs> <laughs> they adore you. Okay, so Angus Kroll wants to know, do you see a future where music becomes rental, so like paid streaming services only, or will there continue to be a market for physical releases like CDs and albums? Um, I think I think that it's going to be a lot like, uh, like the self-driving cars that we're all about to be, you know, bombarded with in the near future is that I think that there's going to be a regulated, there is going to be a way, you know, something that will happen in the industry, whereas very much so there probably, I'm just thinking here, um, there probably will be uh, kind of like, um, kind of like, I guess the, the way it is with like Apple Music and Spotify now where it's like you have a subscription or, uh, or yes, you're, you're renting certain things kind of like movies or, or whatever, and, or you can choose to buy, Um, but same thing with the cars is that I think that there are a lot of people that really, really love driving a car. And so there will be certain spaces, you know, that still exist to get that physical thing. Um, and I think a lot of it is going to be the choice of the artist too. There are, there are a lot of artists that, that I know now that have chosen to just be completely digital and not even Mm. do physical copies. Me personally, I still really like vinyl, so I'm going to keep putting all of that out. Um, and CDs, I like having the physical um, thing, and, and I love when bands do that so that it, you, know, you just feel like you own it a little bit more, like it's yours, mm. it's something I'm listening to on the computer. So uh, I think it's going to be a little bit of both, uh, but I don't think we'll completely lose the physical. I don't think so. I think that there will be space for that. But that's just me predicting. <laughs> I don't know. I'm hoping. That's the way <laughs> Hoping. Fingers crossed. Um, Quirky Uncle Dave would like to know, regarding your collaboration with The Who, I'm wondering if that experience was kindled or has kindled an interest in similar collaborations with other non-traditional rock slash metal groups from around the world. And yes, Quirky Uncle Dave is uh, is, is one of our favorites. I, I <laughs> love Quirky Uncle Dave. That's right? I actually had a Quirky Uncle Dave when I <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Fun one. He was the 
fun one. Um, uh, yes, absolutely. Um, it has completely sparked an interest in that. And it's actually a big reason why now, um, like regardless of what, what genre or who it is or how big or how small, um, the artist, um, I love to say yes to adventure now. And it's like, it's almost like to, to my detriment sometimes, because sometimes I won't even really think about it. I'll be just like, oh, that seems really cool. Let's just do it. And then I <laughs> get, it's like, what did I get myself into? Um, <laughs> but, uh, but there's a beauty in that too. Uh, but, uh, but yes, absolutely. I, I'd, I'd pretty much be down with doing, uh, I, w- what I loved about that non-traditional, uh, vision, cause yes, they are a hard rock band, but you know, the instrumentation, it's almost, it was probably one of the most spiritual, uh, performances and, and ways to write. Uh, it, there was something about that ancient, uh, just the sound of the instruments. And then they're, they were trying to teach me how to throat sing. And I, <laughs> me, me being like, like we said, a nerdy singer, I was like, oh, I'll be able to figure this out. No, no, no. You have to kind of, tra- it's like opera. You have to train. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Master that. Um, you know, I'm still going to ask them about that in the future, but but to answer Corky Uncle Dave, like, absolutely, absolutely. Um, I, I, I feel like I am now almost trying that out, you know, just so I can feel that feeling again. <clears throat> That's really cool. That's super cool. Michael LeBelieu wanted to know, which one of your songs or collaborations is most personal to you? Okay. Well, one of them, definitely The Who. Um... And, uh, that, that was, that was a very personal song to write on top of an already personal song. <laughs> of mm-hmm. theirs. Um, and, uh, I think also, uh, uh, Lindsay Sterling as well. Um, oh, that was, cool. that was a really beautiful collaboration and, um, she, she gave me a lot of firsts. Like uh, we were on good morning America together and we we're going around to all these pop stations. And, um, this was her first time really like, you know, breaking out into like the radio scene. And huh. I remember, you know, cause she's so incredibly talented and she, she owns everything. She is the boss of everything. You know, to, there's nobody, nobody higher than, than, than Lindsay in her <laughs> camp. And, um, and she kind of took me aside at one of the, at one of the radio stations. She's like, can you do, can you do these radio liners with me? Like the whole, like, hi, I'm Lizzie Hale and this is KLOS and you know, you're listening to whatever. And I'm like, well, yeah, but I don't, I don't think anybody really knows me here. Um, I'm on a different genre. And she's like, yeah, but I just, I haven't done a whole lot of these and, and you've done more of those than I have. So, so it was like a really beautiful, like kind of meeting of the minds. Like she was helping me. I was helping her type of thing. Um, but that was just a beautiful song to perform and to sing. And um, I, I don't know, there's something about when I sing shatter me that I don't know. It, it, it You can't even describe it. It just kind of touches me because a lot of songs um of mine since we do them over and over again um they evolve over time so i I always say they're Mm -hmm. they're they're no longer mine they're theirs you know so like Mm. they're they're the worlds and um and that's a beautiful thing because no matter how many times that i've sung i get off or it's not you or whatever it's been so you know when we were when we rehearse them i'm like oh god this song again but then as soon as you perform them in front of people it's just a whole new life gets breathed in. Huh. Um, yeah, there's that. Uh, let me think. Oh, there's another. There's a song on our last record, Vicious, um, called The Silence, uh, which is probably one of the more personal letting people in, you know, to uh, to my relationship that I have with my significant other. And uh, it was very autobiographical. And at first I was a little nervous to to show it to anybody, but it kind of, in the same way that the song with the who kind of happened with writing that song, it was that same idea. My, um, my guitar player had had this instrumentation, um, on the acoustic guitar for a couple of years. And to the point that every t- single time that he would pick up an acoustic, like in a, uh, like in a guitar shop or something, he would play the same, the same progression. So it was kind of like embedded in my head for a long period of time. And then, uh, one night just kind of sat down. I was really, I, I, he had recorded it, you know, for me 
because I'm like, well, maybe I'll, you know, I'll write something to it. Mm-hmm. And this one night, it just kind of hit me, like everything kind of came into place. And the song, the song was written about, I, I want to say about an hour and it was done. Oh. And, nice. uh, and I, you know, and I showed it to him and he's like, oh, wow, where did that come from? You know, I'm like, I don't know, but it's, here we are. So like, um, again, like I, 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 I think it's important, like we were talking about before, for if you're writing a song or if, even if you don't write, if you're performing to put that honesty out there, it's always going to be better than if you're trying to do something that you're not. Um, but yeah, that one's a personal one as well. <laughs> that's awesome. I haven't heard that one yet. So I think, uh, that might be one that's coming at some point on the channel. And I really try to be very authentic about having my first times, um, you know, be there with the camera and everybody. So anyhow, oh, awesome. that'd be a beautiful one to do. And that was very exciting to me. Um, Dwayne Towns wanted to know, do you think you will ever return to do a collab with Maria Brink and Taylor Momsen? Oh, of course. Those girls are lovely. Um, I, I'm really good friends with, with both of those ladies. Um, in fact, um, I spent many a night um, having FaceTime cocktail hour with Taylor Momsen during the lockdown because <laughs> nobody could go anywhere. It's like, hey, you want to do it again next year? Like, yeah. <laughs> And, awesome. um, and Maria has always been so sweet and so supportive. Uh, like any time that we put anything out, she always texts me. She's like, "Oh, I just heard the new song. I just did this." Like I, and I'm like, "Oh, thanks, girl." So yeah, I mean, it's 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 bound to happen again. You know, it's like there's no way that I would ever say no to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> um, let's see. Josh Allen wanted to know what is your process for writing a new song. Ooh. Right. And I meant ways to skin that cat. Um, right. <laughs> um, so it, it comes in a couple different ways. So um, we're all, as a band, kind of constantly um, being creative in our own ways. Uh, you know, my, my guitar player um, writes a lot of instrumental, you know, music and, uh, and arrangements and all of that, mm-hmm. uh, which he is he always shares with me. Um, sometimes I'm feeling it. Sometimes I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. We'll just keep it in the folder. One of these days it'll, it'll reveal itself. Um, as far as myself, um, I usually, I, the work is showing up. It just is. You have to be willing to sit down and, and mark out some time and make sure that you just try things, try things. So like I have, um, I'm writing lyrics constantly. So there's always something, either a title or a line or something that I'm kind of feeling. Mm. Um, I usually kind of try to not to sound so like meditative or anything that sounds like a hippie about it, but I try to recognize where I'm at in my life mm. right now. Instead of, so if I, so like, instead of sitting down and being like, you know, oh, I'm going to write a sex song. If I'm not feeling like writing a sex song, I'm not going to do it at that moment. It's just not, it's going to be inauthentic. Um, and then sometimes if I don't have any ideas or I'm not really feeling any of the uh, the lyrics that I have already written down on the subject matter, or sometimes they're just big ideas. You know, sometimes it's like, I want a, um, you know, I want a ballad that encompasses um, everything I feel at a metal show, you know, which is actually yeah. something that I just ended up accomplishing, um, which I didn't realize that was my latest. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> That's but, awesome. uh, but, but sometimes it's the bigger concepts. And so you sit down and you try to, you know, you know, uh, just kind of put your head together with it. Um, I do a lot of free writing, uh, so like pretty much every day, which is basically um, you commit yourself to at least three pa- three pieces of paper. If you don't like, you know, paper. I do. I like pen to paper. I have journals out the wazoo around here. Um, and they're all messy and and gibberish and all of that. But, uh, so basically you put whatever the mission statement is up top. Like, so let's say it's, um, I'm, you know, you know, I want to write about, you know, a person, personal change, or maybe I lost somebody, or maybe I'm, you know, really feeling myself right now and I want to be cocky about it or something. (laughs) You kind of put that up on top and then you commit yourself to at least three pages of just nonsense. Anything that you can think of, don't think too hard, but anything that pops into your head that relates to that. Anything. That that sounds like fun. It can be toothpaste. It doesn't matter. (laughs) But what you read, but then when you comb through those pages, there will be things that automatically pop out at you. Like even if it's not necessarily a title or a line or whatever, maybe it's a, a, a word that you chose to use. And uh, so I go, I go through with like my pen and I kind of circle those. 
and anything that gets me excited, I will start again, you know, and, um, and put that up there and then do everything kind of related to that. And eventually you kind of start, um, putting together kind of the puzzle in your head. So maybe you don't necessarily have all the pieces, but you know what the colors are going to be like. Um, you know, and then, and then I'll usually end up going to the guitar or piano. Sometimes I'm just jamming on guitar or I'm sitting at the piano just for the sake of making some music. And I'll start to be like, oh, well, that's really cool. I kind of like that. I don't know what that is. But so then I have, you know, voice memos everywhere or I just sit down and I end up committing to like recording. Um, so, yeah, like, like I said, it's the, the process of, of going through. And then, all right, very important. Um, you have to be willing to work so hard to finish something only for it not to be the right thing and Ugh. go back to the drawing board. It's the hardest thing, you know, but if you don't, you're going to end up settling, you know, and then it's not going to be good anyway. You can't just write a song for the sake of writing a song. It has, and you'll, and you're going to know, you have to trust yourself. You're going to know when it's right. You're going to know. So if you're questioning and you're thinking, oh, that's kind of awkward or, oh, maybe that's a little too, you know, simplistic, or maybe it's too complicated, or maybe it's too, maybe it's not the right subject. Or maybe it's like, would I actually sing this? I say that a lot. Would I actually stand on stage and sing and perform this? Is this exciting to me? And and that's become a really good guiding line as well. It's like, mm. if, I were, if I were to perform this tonight, would I enjoy it? But, you know, not, not would everybody like it? Not is it a hit song? Don't think about those things. That's very important. Because as soon as you start thinking about like, oh, are the fans going to like it? Is radio going to pick up? Is the label going to like it? Is my mom going to like it? You know, you got to like just do those things for you. Um, writing songs is a very personal thing. So you have to follow your own compass, you know, your own true north. Um, so, yeah, that, like I said, there's many different ways, but it's really, it's all about following whatever gets you excited. Follow whatever that spark is, whatever you're like, ooh, if you go like that, mm-hmm. ooh, that's a thing, you know, <laughs> circle yeah. put it down, record it. Um, and then, and then commit, commit to finishing it. Um, and then look at it and be like, all right, do I like it? Okay. I don't like it as much. All right. It still needs work. You know, there are certain songs that, that you write and it kind of comes out of you that happens. It does. You know, like what I was saying before with the silence, mm-hmm. like, about an hour. That never happens. It <laughs> does not happen. You know, and then it, it, one, one thing that Tom Petty said too was because uh, I, I, a really good book, uh, there's been a couple different series, but I, I was, uh, I was in the early 2000s when I was reading this book. It's called Songwriters on Songwriting by uh, Paul Zolo. And oh, nice. uh, so they, and there's all these excerpts where all of these, uh, artists, there's Stevie Nicks, there's Eddie Vedder, there's Tom Petty, you know, um, that they tell you about their process. And some people are more truthful than others. Some people are like, I don't know, it's just so magical and it just comes to me. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, right. Sometimes it does happen, but then you get to Tom Petty and he's like, oh no, I had for American Girl for months before I knew what it was months and I would just keep sitting back down and be like nah, 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 nah. okay not yet all right not yet and then all of a sudden it clicked so just you know be <laughs> patient it doesn't all have to happen at once and and if you if you I, I don't like saying fail but if you do if you, if you fall on your face and you're like all right I just wrote a crappy song that's okay we all do I can't tell you how many songs that I've written that I hate that have never been released <laughs> literally hard drives full of them um but you have to be willing to do that. You have to be willing to, to kind of take out the trash. And and you know what's funny? Sorry, I'm, I'm really rambling your head off. What's funny, for example, um, one of our songs called Miss Hyde. I wrote four different songs before that that had the same subject matter that, that weren't correct, that didn't work out. And it took going through that process of kind of learning, um, inadvertently learning how you want to say things. Mm-hmm. Or then all of a sudden the song took like, and be like, oh, that's how we say that. That's how we do that. So you kind of almost have to kind of go through that in order to get to the great thing on the other side. So don't give up. <laughs> so many golden nuggets in there. I, I again, uh-huh. like I have some students, I'm just going to like be like, listen to Lizzie. Like that is <laughs> that really, really great advice. Good. Um, let's see. Melly Thomas wanted to know, is there a band or artist you have always wanted to work with, but you haven't had the opportunity yet? There's so many still. Um, apparently, you never run out of dreams. Um, um, <laughs> I still would love to sing with Ann Wilson from Heart. Oh. Um, I 
really want to sing with Justin Hawkins from The Darkness. I, I would love to go out on tour with them. I think they're hilarious and uh, we would have a lot of fun. Um, we still haven't collaborated or gone on tour with the Food Fighters, which is kind of funny. Oh. That, that would have happened already because uh, we have a lot of mutual people and mutual paths. Just happen, so I'd like for that as well. Um, also, I really want to sing with Pink. I do. <laughs> um, I know she doesn't need me. But uh, but it would it would be a lot of fun to just kind of collab on something because she's she definitely is a rocker at heart and uh, I see come, that come to the dark side. <laughs> <Come>. <laughs> I, I I see that like very vibrantly. I feel like that is that makes sense. There's a there's a campaign on my Twitter right now that a bunch of our fans are are. I, I don't think it matters. She gets bar- bombarded anyway. She's probably not even seeing it in her feed because of everything. But they've been like really bugging Lady Gaga to contact me. And, you know, guys, that's not necessarily how it works. But I appreciate the support. I mean, <laughs> one of these days, right? I'm afraid that that'll happen. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> I get you. <laughs> That'd be cool, too. That's, that's what they want. I don't know. <laughs> I'm down. Right? If it happens, I will say yes, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, well, I, I think just kind of to wrap up, I want you to plug you. I want to know how people can find your music. I want to know um, what's the best thing that we can do to support you, like buy your merch, go to your concerts. Like, what is it that we can do? Um, where can we find information about, like, how to get tickets to your shows, all of these. So tell us how to support you and everything that's awesome that you're doing. Awesome. Well, um, as far as the most recent thing, we just released our first single for our next record. Woo! Um, called, called Back from the Dead. And uh, really proud of it. And it's, it's out now. It's out everywhere that they stream. Um, and uh, and we did a music video for it um, that I'm really proud of. So that's out there right now um, if you want to hear the latest. Um, as far as uh, you know, where to find us, um, our website is hailstormrocks.com. Um, but we are highly Googleable, so if you <laughs> hailstorm H A L E storm, um, you can find a lot of strange things. If you really want to laugh, though, if you look up hailstorm uh, like 1999, you can see a 15 year old me um, singing with a keytar in front of the bank with my little brother on a rotating drum kit that we built out of. Uh, you know, we had like a tractor axle, uh, steel beams, and I, like bolted his kit on there strapped him in with Ford seat belts and let him fly. We were very <laughs> crazy parents. I've talked to them about that. It's like, isn't the first, first rule of thumb, like, don't shake the baby? Like, we could have hurt him, but <laughs> but my parents are crazy. Um, that's awesome. So are we. Anyway, <laughs> that's not necessarily, you know, I thought I, 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 I'd throw that, that fun thing. It's wonderful. But, um, but uh, as far as uh, we, so um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I'm official Lizzie Hale. Um, and then, uh, I'm just right. I actually own Lizzie Hale on Instagram, just regular Lizzie Hale, but I got locked out of it. And so now I don't know what to do with it. So <laughs> <laughs> my techie friends would be like, can we just like transfer things over? Um, anyway, um, I'm Lizzie Hale on Twitter. Um, I have a Facebook page, like I said, highly look upable. Um, I really enjoy, um, talking with people over social media. It's kind of, it's, it's a very intended social experience for me. Um, and I like keeping in touch. So don't be afraid to reach out or, or talk to me. Um, uh, yeah. Or ask me anything. There's not much I won't talk about. Um, let's see what else is going on. Uh, like I said, we're, we're in the process of, uh, recording and releasing a new record. So that's coming up soon. Uh, we, we hit, we hit the streets uh, with Evanescence in November, so um, make sure you get you can get your, uh, your tickets on our website, or uh, there's a bunch of other websites with Ticketmaster and all of that that I'm sure you can find something, um, or you can go on there. Uh, <laughs> on uh, you can go on Evanescence's site. We'll be there too. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, and as far as uh, how we make most of our living, that comes mostly from touring. Um, if you like what we do, um, buying copies, um, you know, we, with the streaming thing these days, the way that the music industry is, it is, uh, kind of, we all as artists kind of got screwed out of that deal. There were a lot of secret deals that happened with the labels. So the labels make most of that. We get some, but, um, for, for me, the most important thing, I don't 
you know, money aside, I didn't get into this for money, but the most important mm. thing you really want to support us, A, come out and see us live, um, whenever that happens and, uh, and, uh, and spread the word, you know, if you like something, make sure you tell people about it because that's the, that's the number one thing that we, that we love about doing this, just getting more people in the family. It's more people in the group, you know, this, this, uh, this thing that we do, it's, uh, it's the closest thing to church. I think, you know, <laughs> it really is. We, it, yep. It's, <laughs> um, the, the rock show doesn't care whether you're a boy or a girl or what's the you got who you like to kiss what you do for a living doesn't care about any of that we are all the same at the rock show and that's something that's really important to us so we hope to see you know more and more people come out and just have a great time with us sorry there's a somebody blowing leaves out there or <laughs> oh. this at all the noise the noise uh, reduction is taking care of that pretty well oh, that's awesome well never mind everything is normal here <laughs> <laughs> well i'm yeah i we're going to come and see you obviously. And, uh, we'll also post information about that in our community about when that's happening. So I can't when, wait to embrace you in person. That's amazing. <laughs> I hopefully, or, or maybe we'll say hello from afar if we need to keep you safe and functioning, you know, whatever, whatever it is we can do to support you. So, um, I'll, yeah. have to, I'll have to get like a glass box and I'll just sit in it and be just like, hi, <laughs> right. people like put their hands up on it. You're like finger, <laughs> fingerprints. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there, you know. um, no, but I, I just, you know, I really want to thank you so much for taking the time to, um, to sit with me and to talk about the things that we are both incredibly passionate about. Um, also for listening to me ramble. Um, <laughs> I love it. Very brave thing and no small thing. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, thank you so much for the opportunity and, and obviously thanks to everybody for, uh, for watching and listening. And, um, I, uh, I hope to see you all on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Thank you so much. Once again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, darling. <laughs> You're the best. <laughs> <laughs> You're the best. <laughs>